All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, on part two of this video for biochemistry, we're just going to finish up the rest uh, of the information, which mostly just includes your four major macromolecules, uh, how are they built, and what are their major structures and functions, what are their jobs. So again, I'm just going to flip you back right here to the um, course at a glance. Oops, went too fast. And we're looking at uh, 1.4 through 1.6, roughly. Properties of biological macromolecules, structure and function, and nucleic acids. So let's go ahead and jump over to that. Um, again, this topic covers about 10% of your course material, give or take. So these are the four major building blocks uh, that make up all living things. There are four of them. Um, here we go. Number one, we have uh, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are also known as your polysaccharides. So I can write that down here. And these are used mostly for short-term energy storage. So if you're going to run a sprint, uh, your body is mostly tapping into purely your carbohydrates. Uh, sometimes it can be used for structural support. Um, the, my best example of that would be cellulose, which is found in um, plants uh, to build their cell wall. Uh, you'll also notice that sugars always end in ose, so then you know it's a sugar. All right, second uh, macromolecule, you have lipids. Lipids are your fats, also includes your waxes, oils, uh, as well as some steroids. Um, these are typically used for long-term energy storage. Uh, you find them also in your cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer, and like I mentioned, steroids like testosterone and estrogen are also considered uh, lipids and signaling molecules. Proteins, the third one. Uh, proteins, another name for a protein is what we call a polypeptide. The reason is because uh, proteins are held together by peptide bonds. Um, they basically function just about everything, talking about structure, movements, immune system, signaling. So we'll go over a few examples of what proteins do. Um, example is your hair and fingernails, your antibodies, uh, all made of proteins. And lastly, your nucleic acids. Um, that's your DNA and RNA. Um, and these are all used for um, storing your genetic information. Um, since all macromolecules are chains of things, we call them polymers. Um, and they are made up of specific monomers. So you should know what those monomers are and how they form to make the macromolecules. So again, this is a review of a dehydration reaction um, and hydrolysis. So here you can see we're joining these two sugars together. Here's sugar one, here's sugar two. We take out water, and you can see that they've been joined by a bond. So that's dehydration occurring to join these two monomers to make a, I guess you could say in this case it's a disaccharide, there's two sugars. Um, down below we have hydrolysis occurring. Um, you have a disaccharide, two sugars, maltose, there's sugar one, there's sugar two, and we want to digest it, so we add the water, and we added the water back in right here, and you notice there are two separate molecules now. Um, that's adding a water, it's called hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Um, again, this is just going back over it, but carbohydrates are your sugars. Uh, the single building block we call a monosaccharide. Um, if there's many in a chain, like you see here, that's called a polysaccharide. Um, they're held together by something called a glycosidic linkage. Uh, I don't think you really need to know that, but I'm adding it anyways. This is why sugars are good for us to, um, to get a quick energy boost because we can easily break down these bonds. So you can access the energy pretty quickly. Lipids or fats. Um, 
you can see here, these are actually long chains, molecules of long chains, and typically they're just chains of carbons and hydrogens. So there'd be hydrogens and carbons. And these break down very slowly, uh, which makes them good for long-term energy storage. Um, you can see up here, this is a steroid cholesterol. Um, steroids are typically a, if it's a lipid-based, a fat-based steroid, it has three carbon rings, or four carbon rings, excuse me, fused together. So like testosterone, estrogen, in this case, cholesterol, four fused um, carbon rings, and that's, they're gonna be typically used with cell signaling. Here's a triglyceride down here. It has one, two, three uh, fatty acid chains and the glycerol up here. Um, and then down here you have a phospholipid at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, it got cut off, but phospholipid is a phosphate head with lipid or fatty acid tails for the cell membrane. Proteins pretty much do just about everything in the human body, but uh, they are made up of amino acids. There are 20 amino acids. You might remember a few of them from a recent unit we've done, like um, alanine, uh, proline, lysine, valine, um, there are 20 amino acids. Each amino acid is structured like you see down here bottom left. Um, it contains an amino group, which is a nitrogen with two hydrogens. It has a central carbon. It has a COOH, which is carboxylic acid. And then it has this little thing called an R group. So the R group is what's unique to each amino acid. Everything on the top above the R group is always the same um, between all amino acids. So how would two amino acids join together to make a peptide bond? Let's take a look at that real quick. Um, okay, so remember we have to remove a, uh, a water to make this happen. So here you have NH2, middle carbon, R group, hydrogen, C, O, O, H. And let's say we want to join it with another amino acid. So I'm going to make that one a different color. Let's make it green. NH2, middle carbon, R group, hydrogen, C, O, O, H. So all we have to do is remove a water. And here you can see here's a water right here. We're going to take that out. And that's going to bring our two amino acids together. And I'll make a little bond right there. Um, so, yes, joining uh, two amino acids is as simple as just removing a water. That's a peptide bond. Peptide. If you have many of them, it's a polypeptide. Okay. And your, your nucleic acids, um, I would like you to know the, uh, the monomers or the nucleotides. Nucleotides are made up of phosphate, a five carbon sugar, and a nitrogen base. Um, now we are gonna go over purines and pyrimidines in a second, but the sugar phosphate is what makes the backbone and the nitrogen base is what makes up the, the rungs of the ladder and the DNA and the RNA. You can see DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded, and RNA has a uracil, whereas DNA has a thymine, so slight difference. Uh, this was a picture that was actually on our test. What would be the difference between molecule one and two? Take a look at those. You can see that they pretty much look the same, except for this one has a zigzag bond, and this one, all the bonds point downwards. You can see they're all angled. This one's zigzag. So the one on top is a much stronger molecule because of how the bonds zigzag, and the molecule below is weaker. So this one up top is actually going to be cellulose. Um, that's what's used in plant cell walls. It's very strong. 
<clears throat> and um, it's what we call fiber. The one on the bottom is um, one that we call amylose, which is something your body can break down because it's weaker. Um, and it's all because of how the sugars are bonded together. One bond is weak while the other is strong. Um, this is just showing you the uh, fluid uh, mosaic model uh, of the cell membrane. I wish I could zoom in a little bit, but uh, the middle part is what we would say hydrophobic. Water cannot get through. And the heads of the phosphates are hydrophilic. So the only thing that can actually pass through the cell membrane straight through are small nonpolar molecules. Anything that's larger or anything that's polar cannot pass through that barrier. Proteins, again, have a wide uh, variety, diversity. Some of them are amino acids are charged, some are polar, some are nonpolar. Um, this was a um, showing us the different shapes that protein have, that proteins have. If they're in a, just a complete chain, we call that a primary structure. If they're corkscrewed or folded like an accordion, we call that the secondary structure, which is right there. If they're kind of um, in the accordion structure and the uh, spirally structure and you start to bend them in three-dimensional shapes, that's your tertiary structure. And then if you take multiple tertiary 3D proteins and put them together, you have your quaternary, which are most of your proteins. And we know uh, that proteins, I know you guys are pretty good at this, but proteins can denature. If you get uh, something that goes outside of its proper pH and temperature, uh, that's why when you cook an egg, it turns white. The heat is actually breaking the proteins apart and is causing the proteins to denature, uh, as well as strong acids. You could dump pure acid on an egg and it's actually going to make it look cooked, as you see here, because it's breaking down the three-dimensional structure of the proteins. Um, we call that denaturing. And if you change the shape, you change the function, and the protein can no longer work. Everything in biology is your shape defines your function. It's like having the wrong size shoe. The shoe doesn't work if it's not the right size. It carries over to biology. And I think I'm going to hold this off there uh, for today. Uh, again, all in all, I'd like you to also look up uh, why does water float when it is in solid form. Um, I would also like you to look at the buffer system that should be in the review that I gave you. Uh, what happens if your blood becomes too acidic or too basic? What is the bicarbonate buffer system? Um, those are a few things you can look up on your own uh, to kind of enhance your knowledge. Uh, other than that, we've covered just about everything you need to know for biochemistry. Um, next time, we'll have a new topic. All right, you guys have a great day.